welcome back. And today I want to touch on a subject that's near and dear to my heart, voltmeters. And I know I harp a lot on voltmeters, but this is an important subject to get under your belt. Voltmeters are extremely important. Now you can see right here, we have a plethora of voltmeters on the bench today. Hell, out in the garage, I have, let's see, two, four, I bet I have, no, I know I have, at least eight voltmeters in the garage. I've got two of these. These are 50,000 ohm per volt meters. These were my Kranta, and surprisingly, a good meter, 50,000 ohms per volt is unusual for a VOM. I've got two of these. One of these I had as a kid. I don't even know how I got a hold of the other one. I have two of these. I have two digital handheld voltmeters out there. I have a small analog VOM that lives on the motorcycle as a travel meter. And I've got a couple of specialty meters that are designed specifically for working on car, troubleshooting cars. In fact, they'll inject voltage to test things plus measure voltage. Why are so many different types of voltmeters important? And why do I keep hanging on to these old triplet 630 PLKs? Why do I keep hanging on to these analog meters? Everybody says, well, you've got digital meters. Use, you know, who would use that old tech equipment? Well, it's extremely important to understand why. A couple things I'm going to show you here real quick. One is this schematic. Now, this is old equipment, and if you're going to work on old equipment or new equipment with FETs, it's important that you understand some of the notes on the print. Oops, almost knocked the camera over here. Let's try not to make a disaster. <clears throat> On this drawing, or on this print right here, this uh, schematic, I'm too used to working in the industry calling them prints, it says here, let's see if we can get this in close and get it in focus. I hope. I'm stopped wiggling here a little bit. It says, voltages measured with 20,000 ohms per volt meter. That's very important. You will see on some schematics, like this one, and I hope we can get this in focus, it says here, this symbol indicates a positive DC voltage measurement taken with an 11 megohm VTVM. That's an extremely, extremely important distinction to make between the two schematics. One spells out a 20,000 ohms per volt meter. The other one specs out an 11 megohm VTVM. Why can't I use my uh, VTVM or my high-end digital meter on this circuit? It's a better meter, right? Well, not necessarily. Let me show you something. Okay, here we have a very simple circuit. Got a vacuum tube, got the grid, and our schematic says voltage measured with a 20,000 ohms per volt VOM. Now this could be an FET, it could be the gate to an FET, it could be the grid to a vacuum tube. And then they tell us we're looking for 2.5 volts on the grid. Now we're having trouble with the circuit, this is just one piece of the schematic, but we're going down through the amplification stages and we say, okay, We'll look at our 2.5 volts on the grid of the tube. So down here on the table, we have our little pretend circuit. But instead of using a crusty old VOM, I mean, who wants to use one of these? That's really old tech. I've got a VTVM here, and even though that's still old tech, it's much better than, you know, a VOM, my goodness. So I take my VTVM and I check my measurement. Holy cow! I'm on the 50 volt scale. It should be 2.5 volts. I'm seeing 30 and a half volts there. About 30.5 volts. There's my problem, right? That's why it's not working. Either that or the meter's no good. Ugh, I know how to fix that problem. I'll come over here. And I'll use my trusty 
digital voltmeter, that'll give me a real reading. 30.4 volts again. Oh, there's got to be something wrong with the meter. I have my very expensive Hewlett Packard over here in the background. That's got to give me the right reading. Let's see what we have. 30.438 volts. What the heck is going on? Must be a bad circuit. I'm going to have to rip this apart and fix it. Well, hold on a minute. Let's go up here to what they told us to use. A 20,000 ohms per volt. And I'm going to take my probe. We're on a 2.5 volt scale. We're expecting 2.5 volts at that point exactly full scale and it's probably washed out in the, there we go that's probably better look at that exactly two and a half volts what the heck is going on here well it's because of the impedance of this meter I am getting the correct reading hang on my sister just came downstairs I gotta get her off what's going on here is when we use our voltmeter to measure from this point to ground we're essentially putting a 50,000 ohm resistor in parallel here and we're dragging this voltage down to 2.5 volts from the 30 volts that floats there normally we're dragging it down to 2.5 volts now that would be disruptive to the circuit but when they when they made the schematic they took a working circuit and they measured the voltages using a 20,000 ohms per volt VOM and what that means is when this meter is on the 2.5 volt scale the impedance of the meter is roughly 2.5 times times 20,000 or about 50,000 ohms impedance so in essence we're adding a 50,000 ohm resistor here however when we measured with the VTVM we weren't using a 50,000 ohm resistor we were putting an 11 meg ohm resistor across there so it had very little effect and it didn't drag this voltage down to 2.5 volts now just the opposite can happen. Here we have a slightly different scenario. We have the vacuum tube with the plate and it's telling us the voltage is measured with an 11 meg ohm VTVM and they're expecting 30 volts on the plate. So if we measure it with the meter that they recommend, a high impedance vacuum tube voltmeter, Sure enough, we have 30 volts on the plate. Our digital VOM will give us the same reading. In fact, this little transistorized meter up here will also give us the correct reading because this is a high impedance meter. Just like the vacuum tube voltmeters of yesteryear, this is a high impedance meter of about 11 mega ohms. If I put this up here on the 100 volt scale, it's just about 30 volts, just what we would expect. So we know that part of the circuit, at least the voltages are correct. But if we didn't use a high impedance meter and made the mistake of using one of these meters, we'd think we had a problem because we only have two and a half volts on the plate of that tube because we're creating a very large voltage drop instead of having our 30 volts here we have just added oh, what did I do with my pencil we have just added right here a 50,000 ohm resistor to ground which drags the voltage down across that half meg resistor from 30 volts to 2.5 volts. So having more than one type of voltmeter around is not only useful, it's important, especially if you pay attention to the notes on your schematic. Now some of the newer stuff, transistorized stuff, 
won't tell you this and they're expecting you to use a high impedance digital meter on it. But always look your schematics over carefully and see if they specify what type of meter to use because if you use the wrong meter you're going to get the wrong voltage indications and I got I should be over here sorry if you have the wrong meter you're going to have the wrong voltage indications and you're going to think something's wrong when it's not. That's it, short and sweet. Another rant on voltmeters, but an important one. Hope somebody out there found this useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. I'd welcome a subscription. If you don't subscribe, I'm going to make sure you got the wrong voltmeter and all your voltages are wrong. So you better subscribe. See ya.